told you that this gentleman got the cops to shut down the last event I hosted. You'd say I was lying. But after that said, there's no way you're going to argue. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. I've got safe combo in the house. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what's good, brother? What's, what's happening? What an honor, man. And a privilege to have you on AJ's house um, on you. so many levels. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to be a part of um, your movement. So, yeah, thank you for having me again. Yeah. I was here last time and we were uh, getting the cops to come, you know, and do their thing. So, <laughs> Shut yeah. down the body. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, it was, no, uh, it it was, was like vibes. With you, it was like, you know, after the pres <laughs> president has spoken, no one else is supposed to speak afterwards. <laughs> I think they were sent. <laughs> but, bro, um, you said something. You just, um, just said um, you feel honored or something to be on a part of my movement and yeah. I feel like I feel honored to be a part of your movement and be able to capture what you've been doing Thank because you. you've inspired so much of what I'm doing you know oh, amazing. and I knew a part of it before but obviously once I started um, doing some research I then realized that hey it's been a while oh, that yeah. you've been pushing a movement I have and I have I've been pushing it since uh, my first mixtape in terms of involving just simply music from the continent was in uh, 2009. So yeah. it was a part of me trying to rebuild and restructure myself as uh, DJ Seth at the time, mm. but moving into Seth Combo. Mm. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a minute and it's been a journey. It's been actually really nice to look back and and see what I've uh, come from to see where I want to go now. Yeah, yeah, that's insane, man. Um, sure. With, I'm going to take it back to when I think all of this started for you. With, with, it was around um, 2009, 13, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it? No, I, I 2009 in terms of When like you the, started in the career. And, uh, um, sorry, no, so my first gig career. was like 2006. Yeah. But in terms of like finding myself in electronic music, that became around apparent, more apparent in 2008. Yeah. Um, but this was actually born out of an incident that happened when I was at um, a gig and um, the speakers was rumbling so much that my hard drive dropped Ooh. and broke. Because one of those hard drives where like you power it as well. Mm. Um, and yeah, like uh, I lost everything, literally Ooh. all my R&B, hip hop, dance hall records. And I was like a massive collector of, of all those records. I lost everything. Mm. So I, I was dabbling in a bit of like funky house, UK funky house, mm. some uh, deep house, a US house. And I thought, oh, you know what, let me just leave that and just continue with this. And that's what I did. That's crazy, man. So um, I'm going to take it back to when you started uh, Till 2. All oh, right, right. Yeah, 2009. 2009, yeah. All right. Um, dude, firstly, congratulations <laughs> on holding on and keeping that movement going on for so long. Thank you. Um, what inspired you to start doing your whole um, event franchise and all of that? That's a good question. I think it was um, trying to get into the game in London. London, I felt was at the time was quite um, not saturated, but it already had like some dons in the game that I just didn't think um, I could maybe hang with or be like looked at in, yeah, the, with, yeah. in the same kind of spaces as them. So shout out people like um, DJ Pioneer and DJ Super D. Those are like the main protagonists alongside like Perempe and so many other um, DJs. So um, being quite young and fresh, I decided to um, build my own kind of um, visibility, but also have my own kind of a spin on the music I wanted to to be played at the night, but also engage the artists. Afro. But yeah, just being Afro house yeah. mainly, but also trying to engage a gap in the market where I felt that our DJs and our community were just kind of just DJs and just like they would play here, there, and everywhere. Mm. So my whole take was to basically um, get the DJs to appreciate themselves more of, as artists. And that's why I built the websites. And that's why I used to host um, DJ sets on, on platforms like Apple music that was running mm. at the time. Do you know what I mean? Um, using stuff like hashtags on Twitter to mm. kind of start engaging people and make it very familiar that when you talk about this event, use a hashtag. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez, man, that is <laughs> insane. And we have to mention that uh, you had your 
if I'm correct, the 36th event. Yes. R- quite recently, like uh, two yeah. months, a month ago, yeah. something like that. And yeah. you had uh, one of the finest in the game, Oscar Mbo, um, at here, I think it was. Yeah, here at Alternate, yeah. Uh, okay, firstly, why Oscar? So I've been I've been watching Oscar for some time now and um I've seen him kind of transition into a DJ that was quite deep 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 house. Yeah yeah. Uh and then I I think I witnessed him play a set where he was mixing it with some afro tech, mm, afro house, mm. soulful, deep house and even in some case some I'm, I'm a pianos and I felt like he was the person that was like bridging the music together and I like his style. I like the way he kind of conducts himself. So I felt that um, he would be a good person to bring through Mm. because I've always been wanting to explore and stretch the music. And most of the artists here in South Africa, as, as, as talented as they are, sometimes when they come to London, it doesn't, it may not connect with some of our crowds. Like it might be too deep, it might be too slow, it might be too Afro tech. Mm. But I felt he was the person that was kind of bridging that. And I thought mm. he would probably be the one that, even if the ma- a few people be like, I'm not too sure, I felt like um stylistically he was was probably the best fit i could find and i wanted to bring someone over here for once yeah again i've got you i've got Mm. you nice man and overall how did that event go with everyone else on the lineup i know you will never leave kitty or more behind (laughs) ever ever that's my sis man (laughs) yeah Yeah. kitty more i I booked her first in in 2012 so it's Mm. been beautiful to see her transition you know um from a, a dj in university through to somebody that's now playing at high ibiza and this season twice so um yeah like what i try to do is i i want to mix um international uh different type of flavors but also bring the local so where i have kitty who's more like progressive in the afro side oscar who's like a bridge but from international south africa and then i had kismet and tip are very local mm. very familiar so you get a whole night of different flavors and mm. my mm. whole thing is try to stretch the landscape of the music um as much as i can um, and try and cater so people can leave with uh, different experiences or people can have different conversations mm. where like oh, mm. i didn't like that mm. or i like that i didn't know about that and i like that kind of melting pot mm. as a curator and a, and, a, and a event host i love i love that oh Shit. man dude how you speak right what i love about it and i share very similar similar sentiment is how you are recognized by a lot of people by the culture itself right, right. do you get that do you ever yeah. feel that way I do, I do, yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. I, I get a lot of people telling me this, and mm. I, sometimes I'm, I'm, I become oblivious to it, but I didn't really know until so many people are saying, I said, okay, wow, this is really real. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And it's crazy, man, because I feel like um, as time goes, a lot more people are learning about your story and who you are in South Africa because you're becoming so much, you, you are becoming, I'm not sure about back then, you know, mm. but right now what I see you um, is, is, active in so many other events and just house um events like i saw you doing P- uh, polar with ph yeah yeah that exactly. is cool and i mean that's not an afro per se market um it's a it really represents south africa do you see yourself transitioning into a name of that type of caliber in south africa not just um an afro type name but like right. more mainstream and yeah, yeah. I, th- I think uh, I've just, maybe it's because I've tried to push the culture of South Africa overseas. And mm. I think that's um, being represented now in that in that type of aspect where yeah. it's not about what I DJ, it's about what I, I try to represent, you know mm. what I mean? So I'm always willing to have different type of conversations, whether it be from hip hop to piano. And even if I can't facilitate it in the job I work in, yeah. um, I can still, I know someone who knows someone. So I think that's that's kind of really cool. And I've been coming here for for such a long time. Uh, Twenty, it's my fifth year now, but my third time in a year now. So yeah, yeah. yeah I think I read yeah. somewhere that you've spent something like four consecutive summers in South Africa. Uh, f- it will be five. That's so eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 
So five. 22, during COVID, all your summers, you were still coming. Yeah, I, I, I came. Yeah, I came. I came. Consistency, bro. <laughs> I, came, I came during COVID when they tried to lock it down. And I was like, hey. Ooh, no, I went to Tanzania and then I came over here. And that was that was a really good year because as much as there wasn't that many events, I got to have really good conversations mm. as well. So yeah, it was helpful that I came I came through that year as well. That's dope, man. Yeah, that's that's really, really dope. Um, just a quick, just a quick weird question. How appreciated do you feel in the South African market as opposed to other countries you've been in? I feel really, really appreciated. Yeah. And it's just when, even when I landed at the airport, mm. it was coming out, me and Vanco, and someone was like, hey, Chef Combo. Like, oh, wow. Like, mm. damn. And then, oh, is that how you met? Uh, um, th- just just now at yeah. the, at the um, when he picked me up from the airport, yeah. I'm saying somebody else at the oh, at the okay, gate yeah, yeah. to okay, open the car. Course, he didn't recognize yeah. me, yeah. and then I went into uh, Shaman's Prakoti store. Mm. And as soon as I walked in, someone said Chef Combo. I was like, wow, okay, like we're doing something it, here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're moving. So, yeah. yeah, like I feel very appreciated. And when I go certain spots, and I keep, I really do keep myself to myself, but like a lot of people are approaching me and I think it's it's so dope man like mm. it's, it's, it's I, did, I didn't know what to expect when I first started doing this so yeah to be here now is is lovely that's dope man you discovered um I'm gonna say discovered because I don't know what could have happened if you weren't at that place at that particular time but mm. what we know is three-step now right what was um Tugzin's Magnificent Dance. Because for me, that's the beginning of Three Step. That was right. what yeah. started it. I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, sure yeah. if I'm correct. Um, what was the journey like? Because everyone in this room moves to Three Step like crazy. You know, right. It's becoming its own thing. But you were like one of the first ears ever to yeah. hear that type of sound. What's yeah. going on in your mind? Right. You so, okay. So like, I'll tell you the story. Yeah. Um, uh, we're doing an event in... Um, Ibiza, so at the, the Bora Bora, which was shutting down, um, mm. it's owned by Ushuaia and uh, Hai Ibiza. So they've given us a residency nice. um, every single Monday. So we, I went to Croatia to do Defected Croatia, and then I have the residency on the Monday. I'm booked there. It was me, Kitty, Rocco, and Hannah Heiss was, was playing there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. However, like the the, uh, I will be honest that the the residency wasn't going too well in terms of like maybe the visibility, what we're trying to, the agenda we're trying to push. It was a, it was a struggle. It was mm. hard. And um, I learned a lot from it, which is, which is good, which I take forward to my events moving forward. Mm. Anyway, I, um, <laughs> funny stories, Kitty missed her flight. She missed another flight. So I went to Ibiza. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Rocco came, Hannah played as well. And then it was there wasn't many people there. I'm not I'm tell you there mm. wasn't many. And then Rocco's playing this song now. And I'm like, what is this? This is this is all right. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm feeling it. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, oh wow, I'm hearing log. Mm. I'm hearing deep. I'm yeah. hearing a, some soulful. I'm hearing just a hybrid sound. I think, mm. nah, this is this is insane. As the song, and it all makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. As the song is moving from, I don't know when the first drop is, when maybe minute hour and a half, all the way to the six minute, he's playing it. Mm. So I go to the who's this? He goes, oh, it's Taxin. I'm like, all right, cool. So I've been in talks with Taxin's manager for some time. So I, I took a video and I sent it over to him because my initial thought was, this is the track. That's bridging I'm a piano and all the other sounds that mm. I'm, I'm in. As you heard it, yeah. And I think it's a sell. I, I, that's mm. just what I thought was a sell. And to be honest, I think Rocco had, there was no need for Rocco to play the song that day. <laughs> just the place was empty. Oh, true, true, true. There and was no need. You're not really pushing log and I'm a piano in that type of venue, are you, in any case? No, no, no. Mm. But I just felt like, so I just felt it's. I was meant to be there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I was meant to consume it on my own because Kitty's missed her flights. Mm. And then um, I'm like, no, this is the track for Sondela. Like, I'm like, no, this is the track we need to sign 100%. Yeah. So I've um, gone back to the, no, I've gone back to the airport. Kitty found her way to Ibiza airport somehow. Eventually. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you just go back to the UK? And she's like, no, nah, I had to make it. Yeah. Da, da, da. I was like, all right, cool. After all the cussing and being like, you're wasting time. I said, <laughs> Kitty. But Rocco played this song though. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, this is the one. Yeah. Like for our, for our label, it's going to like 
project is going to do well. I'm sh- so sorry, sure of it. Sorry to interrupt you. You're such a calm guy. I can't, yeah. I can't picture you excited and just losing nah. yourself. Uh, yeah. No, I was like, no, this is the one. This yeah. is the one. So like went back. Then when I spoke to um, his manager, he actually said that the, the track was off the table, like it was to somebody else. So in the conversation, which was a while, I started kind of uh, dreaming about how I would process this track through the label and what we'll do and stuff like that and somehow this conversation turned into someone actually listening to what i was saying mm. and taking it in mm. and then he's like okay like just give me a few days and then on the friday i think we had a conversation on tuesday on friday he called me back and he goes yes we're gonna give it to you i'm gonna give the label to your label and i was like wow okay dope this is in the space of go. how long so actually from August, so this, I think this is August, uh, yeah, early quick. August, but no, we had, I actually sent him the video, but he didn't watch the video. Mm. And then when we had a long conversation, maybe a month after that, so now we're talking about September, maybe late September, that's when we had the conversation. And by early October, we had then signed the record. Yo, yeah. Hectic. Hectic. It was mad. I think, I think it's crazy because of how you say you were supposed to be there to listen to it because... What if you just sent that video and didn't do a follow up? Or, or I know exactly. And Os- Oscar, ca- Oscar came to the UK mm. that time as well, and then I put him in the defective studio, and then he played it as his last track. Mm. So even seeing him play, like, no, 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 I need that. I need that. Like, <laughs> you knew yeah. what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh man, that's crazy. It's a moment in time. I'll, I'll tell you that. Right mm. for for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, it's captured such a such an energy. It's 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 bizarre. So, um, in the UK, right? I, um, this is me speaking from what I think is going on. Mm. Um, Afro House is underground. Yeah. Okay. Very niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and here it's like relatively the same, right? Uh, to a degree. Mm. What would you like to see happen with the sound overall, globally? I mean, you mentioned what, what, what you'd want with the DJs, but like as a movement, what is your... Not end goal, but like, what is your vision? I think um, that just more representation in um, spaces where our music is being played, but not being represented in mm. the, it, by us. You know what I mean? Mm. It's for us, it's by us. It's inclusive. It is very inclusive, but it's not to be uh, moved to the side for others, others' gain. So that is 100% mm. what we need, you know what I mean, across the globe. So as much as like some of the gents here and ladies are all, all um, you know, touring and doing some good stuff, there's still many places which is not, you don't really see mm. people like me there. And even in the crowd and stuff like that. So I think we just need to keep on pushing and ensuring that there is a good balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's one thing I'd definitely like to see. Mm. Hmm. Dope, 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 dope. (laughs) All right. uh, I'm just going to, I like to play this little game, right? Sure. It's extremely relevant, bro. But random questions. um, You learn to discover things about people you, you know, otherwise never thought you would. Right, sure, no um, and it's simple, but like, what is an unforgettable moment in your career? I think what it's probably it's probably this the birthday gig I just did with Oscar and Bo. Serious? Yeah, I think that that clip of him playing and you saw the crowd just vibing was a really unforgettable. Nice man, nice. The most iconic DJ set I've ever witnessed was played by. Ooh, the most iconic DJ set. Um, I've got a couple, but the one that always sticks to mind is um, Black Coffee in um, the um, is it Sugar Factory in Amsterdam. Mm. I don't know who made him angry, but that day, I, I, I don't know. Flip the club was, upside down. He no? was going in. <laughs> I'll never forget that. This was uh, 20, 2012. So it was a lineup of um, Manu, Gulo the Song. Oof. Black Coffee, Leroy Styles, uh, I can't remember who else for June Twenty twelve. Yeah, man. Oof. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he was he went in, man. All right, all right, all right. One um one of the best house remixes I've ever heard. Um, oh, I have I had I had it in my head. Um so one of the best house remixes I've ever had is is uh DJ Gregory, Don't mm-hmm. Panic, Charisma main mix. Yeah. That's a beautiful remix. 
I need to hear it. I don't think I've heard it. Yeah, you would, okay. if you ever was here, it's it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, one of the finest remixes that I've heard. I don't know. He took us on a journey on that one. Amazing mm. remixes. And then you got obviously Hiya Hi- Hi- Kaya remix from Rocco is one of oh, my yes, favorites as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one house song I've been listening to for over ten years. Ooh, I hope we were meant to be Abaca Soul remix yeah, by yeah. DJ Kent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's an obvious one. Most embarrassing moment at an event. Um, I've definitely was running and fell down oh. at an event. Yeah, I slipped. Yeah. in front of who? Oh, many people on stage. Um, not quite on stage, but near mm. the DJ before went. <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah, that was bad. Please don't say it was before set. Uh, it was after set actually, but still, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone knew it was me. <laughs> yeah, man. It was is, the is days there a that, video? No, no, no. Oh, no. There's, like, it's like the you. days where like we used to. Well, we still do sometimes, but we have events where we we dress up and we put like our blazers on. Men mm. come in shoes, ladies come in heels, mm. and it's just one of those ones. So. Nice. Yeah, the 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 shoes were slippery, so like yeah, I was nice. All right, so um, open check. Till two, yep. 37th event, who are you bringing? Open check. Open check. Um, I was it a blank check? Blank check, yeah. I definitely was, would like to bring um, Black Coffee mm. to my event um, because, yeah, I have my reasons. Of, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's yeah, I definitely crazy. Like to, to bring this, him It's the second time I asked this open check question, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was also Black Coffee the first time. How much is he that you guys didn't a <laughs> black check to he, he, he is he is a lot, but like it's more to be fair, it's more about um a lot of his uh, influence or music has 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 formulated a part of why Till Two exists and has has moved on. Mm. So like tracks like Crazy um, mm. is like a very staple song for so many people within our community and um, Turn Me On. Even though like so some of the early tracks, it's like Superman, Home Black Coffee, yeah, yeah, those type of tracks. And uh, um, I think like with my event that like. It's just it's just a special thing for like the mm. community to have yeah. a, an event like mine and and a collaboration like his there. So that's one. It'll be like a full circle why. moment. Exactly. So yeah. that's my my, yeah. my 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 main reason. Yeah. All right, dope. Would you leave your USB sticks with us or do a TikTok dance challenge? USB sticks. Serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like you've done some A and R, you get exclusives from everybody. You yeah, just yeah. Leave but they're not in the USB sticks. So oh, that's a good thing. okay. <laughs> You sound like someone who's used to like forgetting those a lot. Oh my God. <laughs> have, Don't just leave uh, anything uh, in those yeah, sticks. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. <clears throat> fashion or cars? Car, fashion. Fashion. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dude, someone was talking about your, your, your kicks as you left the room. Bro. Oh, can, snap. You, can you just put them here so we can oh, just have no. a, a, a young trip check? Oh, my ankles are. Ooh, are, are these your ankles? Yo, oh, no, 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 it's my ankles. I hope they're Oh, your creamed. ankles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope oh, do you have a camera there? Look at that. Dude, what's the retail on one of these? A lot. <laughs> we're gonna google it and put the price uh, right over here <laughs> well no they're very expensive over here really expensive I think. yeah mm. yeah you, if you ever want to get one of these please fly to europe because here yeah, it's, it's too much oh okay a price is like a lot uh more reasonable yeah, i think than... it's a markup here anyway import price mm. and stuff like that so it's always mm. going to be a little bit more expensive but yeah nah, nah, this... yeah all right dj for the rest of your life or host events for the rest of your life think about this because of the movement but yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, a t- it's a good it's a good question, and I've been toying about this 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 thing mm. for a lot, and I think event uh, uh, host events host events that's crazy. Yeah, I like the DJ. The DJ you is mix lovely. really well. Um, at the beginning of your set, you played like I'm not sure if you played two different remixes at the same time of um Ken song that horns um no 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 you built that you created that yeah no that's it's just. No, yeah, it's it's a, the song is not like that. It's it's a different mix of it, though. Oh, it's a different mix yeah, of it. Yeah, correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's a different okay, mix. Okay, okay. So, like, I didn't want to play the obvious one, play yeah. the whole mix from the package, which I felt was thought was quite nice, actually. Mm, yeah, it's really, really dope. All right, all right, sweet. When you um play a set and you'd have to remove one of these elements in your music, would it be bass, bass or keys? 
I'll probably remove bass. What? I like keys, man. Yeah. Keys. So in the in those tracks, like um, mm. I've mentioned before, so uh, we were meant to be the key. I love the keys in that. Mm. Right. It's simple, but it just brings the energy of that track and makes it so beautiful. And also with Hiakaya as well, like mm. when he does, when he brings the keys and that, it's like it just becomes amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Although the the other remix I'm talking about has got a bit of bass, but when you hear the pads. That's just a beautiful element that, that you know, brings this, the, the track along, you know? Mm. All right. See, so you mentioned that um, if you were to uh, have to DJ or host events for the rest of your life, it would be events, which I feel like is wild. You must be having a good time hosting events. Let's go back to Till 2, right? right. I want to go through a few moments. Um, since you've been hosting... What is the best set or who by who was the best Ooh. set you've ever heard? We've had some good sets. So the I'll probably say three. So um technically, te- like the most technical best set that I think we've had was uh Hard House Banton in 2010. That's the most technical Yeah, 2010. That is mm. the most amazing technical set yeah. that I've that we've had. Um and then Again, 2010, Kismet and Tipper, that was like the part where everyone realized Till 2 has arrived. Mm. That set was like amazing from start mm. to finish. The vibe, it was only 200 people in there. Not even 200, there were probably like 170 people in there. It wasn't many people, mm. um, but actually was like to capacity of the venue. Mm. Oh, but that's sold out. For yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, that was amazing. Nice. Um, damn. Bloody hell! There's been some really good sets. Yeah, really good sets. I mean, I've done some some good sets as well, mm, like mm-hmm. my uh, Till Two Classic sets in 2013 was amazing as well. I thought that was, that was so appreciated. Mm. I played like Sing It Back from Maloko. Nice. Yeah, Kaya got a massive reception, and we record the audio with the mic, so you Ooh. had people just going. Ooh, the energy is there. Ah, oh, the energy yeah, yeah. energy was crazy. Uh, Parempe set from. 2019 was amazing so mm. like yeah it's we've had the journey man i oh, can wow. imagine i can imagine see you shedding a tear there ah bro <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 next level bro i can imagine it's next level so speaking of le- next level what was one of the best moments um that you've had experienced there apart from you know the setting? yeah i i think okay so when we started we started on a monday so the 2009 was a monday mm. that kind of just went flopped completely like we only had two good ones but i understand monday is a very difficult day it's not like here where you could do like huddle monday or something mm, like that mm, it's mm. just not like that and we're not a lounge place like in london we're, we're like you're going clubbing or you're at home oh okay. yeah do you know okay. what i mean so okay. then we moved to we Thursday. are sort of at home while we're at the club yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so we have um yeah we went to thursdays at the same club then we moved clubs and we had to, we were forced to go on a Wednesday. Mm. And that's when I built the new website because I'm like, no, I need people to interact with this website and just feel like we are a very serious entity. Do you know what I mean? Like from press shots to how we host our DJ sets to the mm. information we give about the DJ before and after the event. So um, there was a moment, I think it was uh 2012 i think or 2011 we had a show in november you know on a on um on a wednesday and we we filled it out but back then we had people had to text their name and we write it on paper there for the mm. guest list and i walked in the stairs is long and i walked to the left um uh, and it was just wednesday and it was 500 people there all what? hands in the air enjoying the music and i'm Ooh. like wow wednesday in london it's like an afro-caribbean people mm. unheard of unheard of what yeah yeah it was amazing what sparked all of that what uh, the Th- that that much attendance on a wednesday it's just um what we created formal yeah we really did like if you're not di- like people were really talking about this event and again because Twitter was allowing people to, to, to use a hashtag and let's say you go on Twitter and you see it and you're like, oh, what's that person talking to talking about? You click the hashtag and you see 50 other people talking about it thinking, rah, like, mm. I need to be there mm. next month, mm. end of the month, I'm there. Do you know what I mean? So 
Mm. That mama was was pure bliss. Heavy. All right. Uh, okay, so we've got some of your best sets. We've got your best moment. Um, what is the craziest thing you wish to happen for the event? Um, like, w- do you want it to become a Tomorrowland? Do you want it to become this? Do you want it? To, where Where are we going with this? Um, I want um not only this event but like some of the other events in our community to build a good programming of of events you mm. know until two to be a part of that whether it be like the number one or it be like um okay this is the the huge one and then we've got many small ones which is all building within our community mm. so where i would want to go is just to program a full set year but remember, I have retired the brand as well. So I'm just letting you know. You didn't know I retired, retired it. it. I've retired the brand, yeah. So After I actually, 36? I actually retired it in uh, 20... Last year. Mm. Yeah. So what happened now? I got... Well, you know, things happen. You know, when one door closes, and another opens. I got a call. And I got to the space where... Um, someone called me and offered me the venue. And I was like, yeah, this is what I've been looking for for years this venue here Mm. where I could actually exceed people's expectations because so many people were like oh bring back tool two oh Mm. when's the next tool two and I'm like okay if I'm gonna meet this call I want to exceed it and that's Mm. what we've done Mm. Mm. for number 36 so but if we was hypothetically talking I would actually like to do a full program of uh, events so not only club events but like open air as well open air open air so what is like, open air like open the air would be like of... not necessarily festival but like it could be in um it could be in a place where it's not in a club but oh okay to be a open air events okay it could be you. like I've really cool you. man that's wonderful bro so um i like to close off with a little bit of inspiration for the person who's sat through this event right looking for that um a lot of producers event organizers djs and just lover lovers of the genre follow the podcast so what words um of motivation do you have for them to just you know keep keep doing what they love keep doing what they enjoy because i mean it does get challenging for a lot yeah absolutely It it does get challenging it definitely does i think um it's more about I think now my next phase, if I was to do it, would be to build a team because I actually do it pretty much on my own. Mm. Um, I do have a few people that work, work with me. Um, but yeah, people like Abby, um, who works closely with me, but pretty much through the journey, it's been kind of uh, me and mm. stuff like that. So I think it's like building a team that you trust um, and believing in yourself because it is, it is difficult. I am very lucky that I've not haven't had an event that's been poor since like 2009 Mm. and i'm talking about attendance or even return on investment and stuff like that i'm very lucky but then i've put things in place um in order to position myself to get to build that luck Mm. i guess Mm. um i think you need to take yourself out as an event organizer and become a consumer that's number one thing that i always did what would make me excited if i was to attend this event Mm. do you understand so Mm. if Mm. you do that and your lens is a little bit different, you can maybe make some some different decisions mm. and not maybe be so rigid mm. if you are about like, yeah, that, that's how I've always t- taken it. Like um, I used to get really excited seeing um, DJ photos on like Rinse of Them and be like, oh, this person looks really cool. Let me look at them, see their bio, know more about them. Okay, it's somebody that I want to check out. Mm. Um, and because of that, I kind of molded till two on things like that. Mm. And, and I think I captured the excitement of many, but I also captured the excitement of many people who were in university, young people, people that couldn't even attend as well by allowing them to be included mm. in able to listen on Apple podcasts or SoundCloud now. So it's also about being inclusive mm. um, and not limiting yourself to a certain That's age group. That's how you build the genre anyway, huh? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So th- I had a, a call um with a attendee i think it was 2017 when we came back and he called me and he's like oh i've seth i've been waiting for about seven years because i've been listening to this this these sets since i've been 11 years old mm. now i can come i'm so excited and that warmed me because i'm like okay i've accessed a generation of people that were in 
maybe even primary school or even secondary school because mm. their brothers, sisters either pass it down or they found it. I thought that was beautiful, man. Mm. I thought that was beautiful. Yo, I love that. And I want to see it happen myself, you know. I just keep thinking about how to create that. And I guess going to the consumer does help because you start to figure out what people want mm. and figure out ways to bridge the gap the way you did with uh, Ama Piano and uh, House. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, um, like you are very intentional, right? Um, you started a long time ago with the Pile of House compilation. Um, you did some NR um, for Sondela. You're touring a lot. <clears throat> You've got Tool 2 and there's Motherland. What, what, what is still driving you to make this happen? I think seeing what's happening now and um, with um, our artists touring and the spaces that they're getting into is driving me. It's like another phase mm. and stuff like that. And also the conversation of, um, you know, taking a record from point A to point B as in releasing it is also driving me along because now I'm in like the background mm. as well so before I was just the, the guy that collects music that plays music that might host music on a radio station now I'm the guy that people can come to me about different types of conversations so that's gonna that's gonna drive me further because it's like oh wow I didn't know that these things were possible mm. you know now I understand this thing how can I affect that you know what I mean so that's why I'm driven um, to continue. Nice. Simple man. as, yeah. Nice. Dude, it's been an honor um, and to a degree of big privilege <laughs> to have you um, on the show to tell uh, this part of the story, not the whole one, because we're going to do this some other time yeah. next year. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about pleasure. whole new things, um, different movements, different moves that have happened. Um, but moving from here, um, going forth, really appreciate what you've done for the culture. Ah, thank you, bro. And um, I'm hoping that... Um, next time we sit here it's a completely different conversation sure it will be just bro. so that we grow and <laughs> visit different um realms of this thing you I'm know sure will, bro. and yeah man enjoy this life thing but we love you and appreciate you as Thank the podcast heads of course you ah. made it there we're gonna get your signature very excited yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man one love i hope one to love. see you very soon Thank you again, AJ, yeah. man. And, and for you, uh, just keep pushing what you're doing. You're doing it in an organic way. I can see you've got a team in front of mm. you here, which is uh, beautiful to see. Uh, how old are you? Sorry, it's not an interview, but how old are yeah. you, by the way? <laughs> uh, I'm turning 30 soon, so. You're turning, old, yeah. uh, you know, you know. But like, <laughs> you, you know. Dude, if you, if you ask around in this room, but I get you, I get you. I'm the oldest one. <laughs> oh. And they make me feel but, like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you've got like, many good years to come mm. and you you, the thing is um, back to the question you asked me just start mm. and you've started and mm. now we're here mm. we're talking and mm. you've got many other people that you're talking to or have talked to or, and will talk to so just start and um, to get to your hundredth you've got to do one true ah I'm posting that <laughs> <laughs> one love thanks a lot brother My guy. appreciate My guy. it thank Take you